Yeah. All right, so this section uh, is going to be several um, days long. Um, kind of go slow with this because of how important it is for uh, the rest of the year. Okay, so uh, I want to make sure that we fully understand what's going on here, what's fully being asked of us. Um, you see there that kind of make a disclaimer here. You're going to need a solid understanding of this in order to be successful in every other area we discuss this year. Okay, so standard deviation, what we're going to mainly talk about here, is extremely important, extremely critical for being able to um, conduct our statistical analyses through the rest of the course. Um, when we're talking about having um, essentially a list of data, okay, um, an important characteristic of any set of data um, is its spread, okay, or um, the characteristic of any set of data that explains or shows the spread of data is, is very important, okay. So the idea is if I give you, um, like, well, let's just take our, uh, the, our individual, let's take every person in the, in the classroom right now, and if we knew everybody's weight, um, and then took the average, and then we could ask ourselves, okay, how do I, as an individual data point, how does my weight compare to the group, okay? Uh, and that's the idea of, of dealing with the spread of data. And because now that I can, I can, I can essentially ask myself, how do I compare to the average? And when I ask myself, how do I compare to the average, it ultimately tells me how I compare to each and every other individual um, data point or each and every other individual weight uh, of other people in the class. So in some data sets, uh, the data values are concentrated closely near the mean. So in other sets, the data values are more widely spread out from the mean. Okay, this is the most common measure of variation is called the standard deviation. Okay. Standard deviation is a number that measures how far data values are from their mean. Okay, uh, when you when you take a uh, an ACT, I use this because at least when when the last time I looked at results from an ACT for students, uh, it would show this. Uh, it, it would show your standard deviation. Okay, it would show um, how far away you scored from the average test taker. Um, but here are some things that the standard deviation does for us. It provides a numerical measure of the overall amount of variation in a data set. Basically shows you or tells you, uh, based on the size of the number that we calculate, how much variation is in the data. Okay, um, Are the numbers all over the place? Are they concentrated? Uh, near a, a particular value, um, we'll, we'll, we'll investigate that uh, specifically with some examples that make, might make that seem a little bit simpler. Um, it says it can be used to determine whether a particular data value is close to or far from the mean. Okay, uh, So this talks about the concentration of the data, uh, and this then talks about individual pieces of data. Uh, and how close they are to the mean. Um, here are some characteristics of standard deviation. Standard deviation provides a measure of the overall variation in a data set. So variation means how the, ch the change of the data, okay? Um, the maybe we talk about the spread of the data, okay? Um, so SD, a lot of times referred to as standard deviation. Okay? That's the abbreviation we use throughout here. Uh, so standard deviation is always positive or zero, okay? So standard deviation, um, you know, talk about essentially what happens here is, like let's say that we've got, um, I'm going to use like a bubble here for the mean. So let's say that's the mean. And I've got these data points. Maybe some of them overlap, whatever, okay? I've got these data points. If I want to know how far this data point is away from the mean, that distance, even though it might be to the left of the mean, that distance, because I'm talking about how far something is from the mean, has to be positive. 
Okay? And what, why the reason it has to be positive is because I have to be able to then eventually compare it to maybe looking at that data point and how far it is from the mean. Um, so our standard deviation is always uh, positive. But we can also have data points that are the mean or is equivalent to the mean, so they could be on top of the mean. They could be the same as the mean. So our standard deviation could be zero in that situation. Uh, standard deviation is small when the data are all concentrated close to the mean. Okay, uh, it says exhibiting little variation or spread. So if I had something like a list of numbers like seven, 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 let's say eight, and then seven, um, the mean of that is going to be, if you calculate that mean, very, very, very close to seven. And because there's very little spread here in these values, the standard deviation will be very, very small when we calculate it. Okay, so a small, a small um, standard deviation tells you your your data set is compacted or con uh, concentrated, um, and a larger standard deviation means your data values are more spread out. Okay, um, an example that I've seen uh, is like let's say it's your um, uh, I've, I've seen this example used um, for years in, in different classes. So let's say that I've got like, a, take my family for instance. Um, well, then let's go extended family. So and I take all the males of my extended family and I place them all over here. So let's say C and let's just say I've got so I got those people are the males in my family and um, if we looked at all the males in my family they all have either no hair or very short hair. Um, and that's going to be key here as, as I explain this. Now I'm going to take the females in my family. And there might be more females or less females. So the number of uh, these individuals doesn't matter. But now I've got my females. And let's say... Okay, now if you were to go through my family and look at the females in their hair, I'm going to have some females in my family that have long hair. I have some that have long hair, longer hair. I have some that have short hair. I have some that have like shoulder length hair. Okay, some more that are short. Okay, so here's, here's my argument is that males, if I were to go through and measure like the average length of hair for males. So let's say this one is, I don't know, let's just go by inches. Let's say one inch, 1.5 inches, uh, 1.4 inches, 1.3 inches, 1.25 inches. Okay, you can, and that, so those are my data points you see, and I'm just going by length of hair. Um, you can see that those values are compact they're concentrated kind of around like 1.3 inches females in my family might be this might be 12 inches this person's might be 8 inches this one might be 16 inches this one might be you know 3 inches this person's might be 6 inches maybe this one's just 2 inches and let's say this one here is, um, you know, one inch. Okay. Um, you see here that these data points are all over the place. Okay. Between 12 inches and one inch. Or sorry, 16 inches and one inch. Here, we're from one inch to 1.5 inches. So what would happen here is that in this situation, because these values are more concentrated, the standard deviation of 
hair length is going to be small here because the values are concentrated, but the standard deviation here is going to be large because it because the values or the, the data points are spread out. So the larger the standard deviation, it tells me the greater spread exists amongst the, the data points. Okay, so that's kind of what this here was talking about where it says standard deviation is small when data are all concentrated close to the mean. And here standard deviation is large when they're more spread out from the mean. Exhibiting more spread, more variation. Okay. Um, here's some other situations. I suppose that we are studying the amount of time customers spend in a queue. Okay, that's a fancy word for you're in line. At a fast food restaurant A and fast food restaurant B. So at both restaurants, the mean wait time is six minutes. Uh, but at restaurant Restaurant A, the standard deviation for the wait is two minutes. And at restaurant B, the standard deviation for the wait time is four minutes. Okay? So because restaurant A, A has a smaller standard deviation, that means that everybody that's going into restaurant A is experiencing similar... Um, wait times okay the the data is more concentrated around six minutes okay than those people that are um, going to restaurant B restaurant B has a longer standard deviation a larger standard deviation so that means that the the wait times are more varying okay there's greater variation between each data point okay um, so restaurant B says has a higher standard deviation. There is more variation in wait time here, so they are more spread out. Okay, I may not know the individual. You know, there might be, you know, a thousand data points in each one of these. I don't know what the individual data points are at the moment, but I do know how data set B compares to data set A holistically. Um, I says restaurant A has a lower standard deviation. Okay, so there is less variation in wait time here. Okay, this means most people's wait time are closer to six minutes. Okay, so the average four minutes and eight minutes, where in restaurant B you might have wait times that are one minute and wait times that are 11 minutes. Okay, so what we do with standard deviation is basically, and we're going to talk about this rule here in a little bit. Um, if I look at, so what we had six minutes is the mean. So I'm gonna say, so let's say it's A here, so and then group B. So if I say the mean is at six, I wanna add a standard deviation to the six, and it's gonna give me, um, so A had what, a wait time of, uh, standard deviation of two minutes. So if I add a standard deviation of two, it's gonna give me eight minutes, okay? Um, if I subtract a standard deviation of two, it gives me four minutes. What happens, and we'll get into this here in a little bit, but 60, what, we, what we find out is that 68% of people that go to restaurant A are going to have a wait time between four and eight minutes. So of my data points, 68% of my data points are going to fall between four and eight minutes. Okay, uh, I believe it's 97, 97% of my data is going to fall between another standard deviation, so 2 and 10 minutes. So 99% or sorry, 97% of my data points will be between the numbers 2 and 10 for restaurant A. Restaurant B, because we have a standard deviation of 4 minutes, okay, uh, so I'm, I'm not going to put two standard deviations because it's going to give me two a negative time, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense in this situation, but if we look at that at one standard deviation, now I'm, I've got people waiting between two and 10 minutes. So my data is more spread out than what it was here when I was waiting from four to eight minutes. Okay, so that's, that's kind of the argument that's going on there. Um, so standard deviations can be used to explain how close data is from the mean. Um, and then that allows us to, to make predictions. If I, um, 
if I'm a person, I want to go to um, restaurant A, I can, and, I, and I know this information about it. If you've ever gone to like a fast food restaurant uh, and sat out in, in, in line, occasionally there's people out there with like laptops or tablets or whatever, and they're, they're essentially taking um, statistics. They're recording data on these queues and the time that's waiting of people waiting these queues. So, so like McDonald's knows for their different locations the standard deviation for wait time. Um, and if I'm a, a customer there and I knew that standard deviation, I, I could make an argument about knowing the probability that I'm going to have to wait between two minutes and eight minutes or four minutes and eight minutes or something like that. Okay. Um, so as a rule of thumb, this is not automatic, but it is somewhat of a rule of thumb. Uh, states that anything more than two standard deviations from the mean is said to be far from the mean. Uh, and what you'll see uh, them often talk about is that it's an unusual value. So two or more is an unusual value. Um, it says we will be much more precise about far in future chapters. Um, again, that's that's a that's a vague word. Mathematics we don't like to be vague, uh, but and we don't like to be, you know, unusual is also a vague word. Um, in your homework tonight, they're going to ask you situations that uh, they lay out in front of you and they say, okay, is is this data point usual or unusual? Okay, and basically you're going to determine, okay, well, is it more than two standard deviations away from the mean? Uh, and that will then classify whether it's usual or unusual. All right, a key concept here, it says if X is a number, then the difference, X minus the mean, okay, is called a deviation. Okay, so if X is a number, so X is a data value, a data point, minus the mean, that's what we call a deviation, okay? Um, devi to deviate means to move away from something, okay? So that's kind of the idea here. We're talking about the distance, the sub data point is away from the mean. So that's where deviation comes from, okay? Um, if, um, try to use deviate in a, kind of non-mathematical context. Um, if I deviate from my task, okay, um, that means I've gone away from my task. I'm not going to be able to maybe accomplish it in an efficient manner. Um, so it means to move away from something. Uh, so in a data set, there are uh, as many deviations as there are items in the data set. So if we're going through and talking about the weights of uh, students in this class, if there's 20 students in the class, there's going to be 20 deviations. There's one mean, and then we can take each one of those data points, each, each of those 20 weights, and subtract it, subtract the mean from it, and find out how far away then that individual value is from the mean. Okay? So the deviations are used to calculate what we call the standard deviation. Okay? We're going to have some symbols here for working standard deviation. Um, we first have to know what we're talking about. Are we talking about a, um, a set of data that comes from a sample, or are we talking about a set of data that comes from a population? Um, if we're talking about samples, obviously we have to use the notation for samples. So X is your data point, okay? That's your individual value. X bar, remember that's your sample mean, okay? If we're dealing with populations, remember, uh, X is, again, your data point, but mu, that's your population mean, okay? Uh, so the calculations for standard deviation are similar when working with samples and populations, but because samples do not incorporate all values from, from the population, the calculations are not identical. Um, I'm not going to get into, because it's a, it's, it's a much higher level of mathematics and statistical analysis and statistical understanding uh, for us to really delve into the creation of a lot of these formulas um, and why maybe they vary a little bit. Um, for instance, right here, so these two formulas are very similar. 
but one we're subtracting one from n, so it's a sample, we go n minus one, it's the population, we just divide by n. I'm not going to get into the, the particulars of that, but it's, it's through higher level statistical analysis that we've determined that to make the sample variance model the population variance better then we we subtract one from from the sample size um, <clears throat> okay so this is the calculation standard deviation is similar when working with samples and or samples and populations um, but but just a little bit different symbols for uh, our formulas here s uh, is going to refer to as the sample standard deviation so lowercase s so see time um, okay so this symbol here it'd be kind of hard to see how it's created but it's that symbol there okay um, is lowercase Sigma okay so we already know capital Sigma this is lowercase Sigma okay um, that refers to the population standard deviation okay so if the sample has the same characteristics as the population, then S should be a good a good estimate <coughs> of sigma. That's key. That's that's really essentially what's going to allow us to do um, <coughs> this statistical analysis. Uh, remember, it's hard for us to gain information about the population. It's going to be hard for us to do standard deviation for the population. So what we do is we find the sample standard deviation. And as long as we have taken the um, the careful creation of our sample, we've done it using simple random sampling techniques, then we can be guaranteed that when we find the standard deviation of that sample, it's going to be a good estimate of the population's standard deviation. All right, so... The next thing you're going to think maybe seems kind of silly that we have two formulas um, and one of them is used to generate the other one. Okay, so these, these things tie in together. It'll make a little bit more sense when um, we're essentially going to have two things that allow us to talk about the same thing. Um, I'll explain. <clears throat> so variance. Variance tells you how far a data set is spread out. Okay, we've already talked about variation, variance, same idea. Uh, but it is an abstract number that really is only useful for calculating the standard deviation. This is variance is the average of the squares of the deviation. Okay, so I want to go back to um, a, a picture here real quick. All right, so when dealing with these deviations, um, if you look at this, so again, this is a deviation. So this is your, just your data value minus uh, the mean. Um, if, if I do that, let's think about our mean being here in, in our list of data, okay? Um, if I'm talking about this deviation, it's how far away I am from the mean. So if I look at this here, that distance is going to be positive, okay? And then if I look at this distance here, okay, the idea, so it's, it's x, which is your data point, minus the mean, it's actually negative. And that would be a problem for us with our formula. I know we're talking about distance, talking about how far away we are, but because we're to the left and, and we're going off of this, we, we, we're not talking absolute value or anything at this moment. Um, this negative deviation would actually cancel out this positive deviation and potentially uh, every data set is then going to have a deviation of ultimately zero, okay, so, uh, or negative, which wouldn't make much sense. Um, so what we do is we, we square things, which, okay, that makes sense. Now everything's going to be positive. And then we can sum those things up so we'll have a numerator that is always positive, okay? Um, so that's why we have to square, 
Okay, that's why we go through this in square. So, so really what's going to happen here is let's say that I've got um, kind of <clears throat> kind of dissect this formula here. Um, let's say our mean is, I don't know, 5. And let's say that this number here is, is a data point, so it's 7. So this would be our x bar, and let's say that this is x. So what we would have to do here is we'd actually have to go, so okay, x minus x bar, so we'd go 7 minus 5. We would get the value of 2. We would square that and get the value of 4, and we would keep track of that number. We'd write that number down, okay? Then I would go to another data point. Maybe that one's 9, so that's another x. So then I go, okay, so 9 minus the mean, so 9 minus 5 would be 4. Then I got to square that, and I get 16. And then I'll come over here. And maybe that value now is, let's say that's 3. Well, I would go x minus x bar, so I'd go 3 minus 5, which would be negative 2. And right there is a situation of, like, this, this deviation was 2, this was negative 2. They would have canceled out. But now I'm going to square it instead, instead of letting it cancel out, and I'm going to get 4. I'm going to calculate that and, and write it down. So I would do this with all of these, all of these data points, and I would I would talk about how determine how far away are they from the mean? What is the deviation of each of the you know, each of these squared? And then this here, remember that capital sigma tells me you're going to sum all those up. You're going to add all those up, and then you're going to divide by n minus one. So if I've got in this case I've got five values, I have five. Um, data points, then I would divide by 4. Okay, um, If it's a population, it's the same approach, different variables. Okay, and those variables just elicit and remind me that I'm talking about a different uh, group of objects that, that have different characteristics maybe, because um, obviously a sample is a small group that comes from the population. The population is the entire group. Um, so remember, mu is the population mean, and then capital N is the population size. And really, these two formulas are the same, okay? Except for, like, and I kind of explained it probably about five, six, seven minutes ago, that when we, we do sample variance, uh, we have to divide by n minus 1, where if we do population variance, we have to divide by n. And that's, like I said, that's a higher level of statistical reasoning and why we have to do that. But its, it's intention is so that this is a better estimate of this when I don't know this. Um, if I left this as just n and divided by n here, it's, it's going to be, we, we find out that that, sample variance is pretty far off from the, the population variance um, when we do know both. Uh, but that's it's, it's kind of what we call, maybe a, we call it a correction inside our formula. Um, okay, so what does that do? What, what are we talking about here? So let's go back to the what, what our variance is going to be able to do. It's going to give us a number that allows us to then make a comparison of um, each data value compared to the mean, okay? But it doesn't mean anything. Okay? It's a meaningless value. If we go back up to here, it says variance uh, is the average. Where did I have this written? Okay. So it tells you how far data set is spread out, but it is an abstract number that really is only useful for calculating the standard deviation. It's a meaningless value, okay, in regards of like being standalone. So what, kind of think about what, what's going on here. Let's say that I gave you, let's say we go through and this mean here, let's, let's go back to the situation where we're calculating um, the weights of students in this class. Okay, uh, and the mean here would be in pounds. Okay, that would be in pounds. Each individual data point would be in pounds. 
Okay. But when I do this work here, because we're trying to make those deviations positive, so we square things, what happens is that when I go, you know, this seven pounds minus that five pounds, I get two pounds, but when I square that, I get four pounds squared. Four pounds squared. Well, that's a, that's a unit that makes no sense to us. It's a meaningless unit. Pound squared doesn't doesn't have it doesn't carry any meaning throughout all of mathematics. Okay, so if I if I get a number, let's say I get our standard deviation to be, um, you know, four pounds squared. If we go through this whole process, we get four pounds squared. Well, that four doesn't really tell me a whole lot because now what I'd be in, in comparison to the rest of the data, because remember the data was pounds, so I can't compare pounds squared to pounds. That doesn't make sense. So how do I fix that? Square root it. And now I get a numerical value that is comparable to the data values that I collected in my either my sample or my population. So that is the need or the necessity for these formulas down here. If you look at this formula, it says sample standard deviation formula, okay, abbreviated STDEV a lot. Okay, if you go to like Excel and type in that, that's going to be the, the call sign for, for Excel. But if you look at it, all it is is taking the variance formula and we square rooted both sides. Okay, this, this radican is exactly this thing right there. Okay, uh, so there, I don't know there's like four formulas here, but there's really only two. And if we understand the difference between sample and uh, population variance, there's really only one formula we have to remember here, and that will allow us to generate all four. Okay. Um, now, here's the population standard deviation formula. Okay, so it's the same as the variance, but we take the square root. Okay, um, this one here says in the second formula, the F is used to quicken the process if a particular data value has a frequency greater than one. So you don't necessarily need this, and we could do the same thing up here with this one. We could put an F there if we needed to in the sample. So let's say you go through a, a list that has, um, I'm gonna just drop my mouse. Let's say we have a set of data that um, had like a five, a seven, a seven, and another seven in it, instead of doing the subtraction three different times and the squaring process three different times, we can use multiplication to quicken that. So that's what that F is representing. Um, okay, so let's do an example of this. And this can be, this can get messy if we're doing this by hand. We won't do this by hand for very long. Or I'm gonna ask you to become um, familiar with the process and do it a couple times by hand, uh, ask you on uh, maybe some assessments, some homework to do it by hand, but then eventually, because the standard deviation is a number that we're going to then use to make inferences. So it's going to be an intermediate value that I find. It's not going to be the end-all, be-all of the problem. So I want to be able to get that quickly and then move through my problem and, and do my analysis um, efficiently, okay? So we will use programs eventually to, to develop the standard deviation, okay? Um, but what we've got here is that in a fifth grade class, the teacher was interested in the average age in the sample standard deviation of the ages of her students. The following data are the ages for a sample of 20 students. Um, so the ages are rounded to the nearest half year, okay? Um, so we go through here. And I'm just going to count my frequency, okay? So I've got, um, and I'm going to actually do this, we could, we could do this one of two ways, um, but usually when you're, when you're doing this, you're going to have a chart set up to just organize what you've done and what you need to do. Um, and usually that chart's got your data, if, if you want to use the idea of the frequency, you can. You don't necessarily need to. Uh, so, like, if I got 9.5 here, 
uh, in a moment, I'm going to put frequency at two here, but if you just said, nope, I'm going to do 9.5 again, and then just have essentially two deviations that are one after another the same, uh, it's fine. Okay, so you don't need to use the frequency version if you don't want to. I'm going to go through and count the frequencies. i got frequency of one there, uh, one, two, three, four there, 10.5, one, two, three, four again. One, two, three, four, five, six, six there. And then 11.5, there's three of them. So I'm just gonna double check, make sure that I've got a frequency that adds up to 20. I had 20 students, so there's, there's 10, 17, 20. Okay, so I'm good there. Um, the next thing I need to know is the mean here. So I'm going to, I'm just going to type this into Excel so that when we're done, we can check to see if uh, what we've done matches up to what Excel generates. Check the time again. All right, so we've got... All right, so I need the mean, okay? And in order to do this, we always need the mean. So I'm just going to say average of A1 through A20 and 10.525. And I'm just going to double check, make sure we go out uh, format cells. That should be the extent of my decimal places, but yeah, 525. Okay. So there is my mean. Okay, so now here, here's the, the key that we need to pay attention to. Um, I, I guess that the way I've worded this problem is that my fifth grade class, I'm taking a sample of 20. So I don't, maybe I've got a class that's got 30 people in it or 40 people in it or whatever. Um, maybe, maybe it's talking about like, the fifth grade graduating class. So maybe it's um, maybe 150 people or something like that. And this is just one individual um, teacher's class. Um, so we do we are dealing with the sample standard deviation here. Um, that's why we're using X bar up here. So um, my mean of X bar was 10.525, I believe. So I'm double check that, 525. Yeah. Okay. So then all we're going to do here is we're going to go through and we're going to actually figure out, okay, what are the deviations? So the deviation is the data point. So remember this is X, so 9 minus 10.525. This will be 9.5 minus 10.525. 10 minus 10.525. 10.5 minus 10.525. Um, and so far, you would you would find out that all of these are negative so far. All of these deviations are to the left of the mean. This one is now to the right of the mean. Okay. So if we just simply took these and added those together, we would have a value that is very small. And then sometimes you can you can kind of realize that, well, maybe that one would cancel that one out, that one, that one, that one, that one, and I get a standard deviation of zero, um, which can happen, uh, but that would happen more often than not. Um, so now what we have to do is we actually have to square these. So this is where it gets kind of messy because obviously I'm going to be squaring decimals. Um, so, I mean, however you want to do this, some people prefer uh, Desmos, um, some people like the, the handhelds. So I'm just going to use Desmos here. And, and again, guys, I'm doing this um, in a uh, kind of a deliberate way. 
Um, it's a lengthy process. It's just something that we're, we're we can't avoid at the, at the moment. And I want you to have an appreciation for what actually goes into creating the standard deviation that our that our calculators are going to do for us. Um, so you see that 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 would be a deviation that's negative. So I want to square that. It becomes positive. So um, the nice thing about Desmos is that it's going to give me the ability. I'm just going to type all of these in. And I think the best thing to do, and, and you can't necessarily do this on your TI-83 or 4 very easily, um, but I can hit Control-C and then Control-V and just go change then that. Um, Control-V again, and now change this to 10.5. Control V, change this to 11, and then Control V, and then this will be become 11.5. All right, so I'm going to go back through, and I'm going to write these values, these deviations down. Um, now, what... what <clears throat> And it's all dependent on how many decimal places your mean is out, um, which is then essentially predicated off of um, how your initial data was presented to you. Okay, and we have um, rounds to the nearest tenths place, so we saw our mean actually went out to the um, thousands place. Um, but not all are going to be like real messy like this. Okay, but some are going to be even messier than what we currently have. It's just the, the nature of the data. But we've got uh, 2.325625. We have 1.050625. We have 0.275625. Now, remember what this means. It means 0.000. .000 625 scientific notation that's going to happen um, and that's because that that value that's very close to the mean uh, so the deviation is very small uh, then we got point two two five six two five and then the last one is point nine five zero six two five now the only thing and I, I think it's important to talk about this if I wasn't using this frequency, um, approach, then, then basically what I would have is I would have another cell that has that deviation in it. I would have three more cells that have that deviation in it. I would have three more that have that one, five more that have that one, and two more that have that one. I would actually have 20 cells in here because I've got 20 sets of data, Okay, but a lot of those cells would be repeats. So I just want to make sure that we understand that. Um, so now I'm, I'm working to figure out the sum of these deviations, but first I got to figure out the ones that were that had a multiplicity uh, that I figured that out. So 2.325625, that was a multiplicity of one. Now this, and, and again, just intelligently using my calculator, I'm going to come back up to here and and that was so the 1.05, if we go back, that had a frequency of 2. So frequency of 2 here. So I'm just going to put a 2 right there. And now I know what should go in here, 2.10125. Uh, the 0 0.271 had a frequency of 4. So then that changes to one point one zero. 1.1025. Uh, this one had a frequency of 4 as well. So the scientific notation one. So 0 0.0025. And then this one had 6.
0.35375. And then 0.95 had three. So 2.851875. Okay. So that was the, that is all of my devi deviation. So that is all of these X minus X bars. Okay. And I've added some of them. So these, these ones that I've frequenced uh, with, with a frequency greater than, than one, I've essentially added some together. But now I need to add all of these together, and that will give me my all 20 of my deviations added together. So a um, couple different ways you can do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just pause the, the video here, and I'm going to actually go back up and cut and paste these out and do it that way. Okay, all I've done here in this line um, is I've gone through and just control C that, came back down, control V, so pasted it, come up here, cut this one, come down, hit plus, control V, and paste it, and keep doing that. Um, if you want to type them out by hand, that's fine, uh, but by doing that, I get 9.7375. 9.7375. Okay, so that is right now the numerator of my variance. Okay, it says now all we need to do is take the last cell and divide it by n minus 1. So if I take this, so remember my formula for um, variance, which we call it S squared, was this over n minus 1. So n was 20, so I need to divide this by 19. So I'll take that number, C, and I'll divide it by 19, and I get 0.5125. So my variance is 0.5125. Okay. Um, now, remember what that means. So this was ages. So what my variance is right now is... 0.5125 years squared. Well, that makes absolutely no sense. Okay, we can't compare that then to somebody that's 10.5 years old. Okay, because uh, what's years squared old mean? Okay, so what we do is we take the square root of that. Okay, so I'm just going to do it this way. So this is the nice part of having some college algebra experience, some algebra two experience. Square root and something the same thing as raising to the one half power. So we get 0 0.71589. 0 0.71589105532. Okay, so this was, remember, this was uh, years squared, and now this is years. Okay. Um, so it says eventually we will. We will use some software to calculate the standard deviations um, for us, and the rounding error uh, is going to be minimized. Um, now, there's 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 no rounding error until we got to the square root. Um, now it's because that's an irrational number. Okay, so I mean we can go back through the video and kind of time how long that took, but that was that was a lengthy process. Um, so what I want to do is just demonstrate the benefit of being able to use Excel. And I know I've been in your seats and, and somebody's told me, hey, you got to learn how to use Excel or we're going to use it from time to time and we don't buy into it. Because I know some of us, you know, I've, I've taught us how to use or I've used GeoGebra uh, for a long time in class and Desmos for a long time, but not everybody always buys into it. Hopefully this gives you kind of a visual of why maybe we should buy in to learning Excel because now I can hit equals, I can hit STDEV, and you see that it gives me several options here, okay? So STDEV, so standard deviation dot P is for a population. If you know that the data you have is for a population, but here I'm using a sample, okay? So I'm going to go dot S. And then I just have to type in my numbers, my, my data. And in my case, since I've got it listed in this array from A1 to A20, I just type that in. 
I get 7.1589. If I want to um, format that cell and just go, you know, how many decimal places can I go out? Uh, and when that happens, when you get these number signs, these hash tags or pound signs, over, it's just telling you that you've got an overflow because your size of your, your, your box isn't big enough. You can extend that. Um, but now I go out to, I don't know if that's probably 15 decimal places or so. Uh, it starts giving me zeros. Those aren't really zeros. It just means that uh, Excel wasn't able to calculate any further. Um, but we see that, you know, Desmos gave me essentially out to this one right here and nude around it to a two because of the six behind it. Um, and that, that'll be something we talk about with, with how we minimize rounding error and that kind of stuff and um, all that, like algebra one, algebra two kind of concepts of, of working with error. Um, so uh, that's our standard deviation. So what does that mean to us? Okay, so how do we use the standard deviation? Okay, so something that becomes very useful is to identify positions within the data that are some uh, number of standard deviations away from the mean, okay? So what we do is we take our um, <clears throat> data value or um, let's write this way. Let's say our, if I take X bar, uh, which was the 10.525 number, okay? And then add or subtract my standard deviation. So I'm just going to put um, in out here right now for uh, a multiplier. But now I put 0.71589 um, What this hep allows me to do then is to say that um, I can figure out what data values are going to be uh, within one standard deviation of the mean. So how they're spread from the mean. So I'm, I'm going to grab my calculator real quick. Um, check the time. All right. Um, so I apologize we've gone over the time, but but it's it's important that this uh, gets all kind of understood and learned in one video here. Um, so I'm going to take the the mean, okay, and then I'm going to add to it n times 0.71589. Nine one zero five three two was my standard deviation. Okay, I'm gonna let n equal one, and it's gonna give me that number right there. Okay, so I have eleven. Eleven point two four zero eight nine. And then I'm going to let n be actually a negative one because that'll be that'll allow me to subtract a standard deviation. So that gives me 9.809, 9.809. Okay. And now remember my mean. Okay, my mean was in between there. Okay, so my mean was 10.525. Um, this would be plus one standard deviation. This would be minus one standard deviation. If I want to go plus two standard deviations, I obviously just make this n value two, and I get um, 11.95. And if I want to go minus two, we can do that, uh, which would be point or 9.09 two standard deviations to the left of the mean. Uh, so what, what does this stuff mean to us? Well, let's go look at our data real quick. If I look at my data, what this tells me is that if I have this person that is age nine, that age of nine is still to the left of two standard deviations from the mean. So what's that tell me about that person that is nine years old? Their age is unusual their age is unusual in comparison to the rest of the data, to the rest of the other students, okay? If you ever wanted to compare how different you are in some type of characteristic to uh, the group that you belong, 
this is how you would do that. Okay, so this person's age, very unusual for uh, comparing to the rest of the group. Okay, um, people that are 11.95, anybody above 11.95. Well, I don't have anybody. I don't have anybody at the upper end uh, of being kind of unusual. Okay, um, what we also find out is that. Okay, that's one standard deviation from the mean, and we're we're gonna talk about this. Uh, later on as we as we complete this section um, but what it tells me is that of this information here of these 20 people 68 percent of those values are going to fall between negative 9.8 or sorry 9.9.8 years and 11.24 years again I apologize for um, going over here in the video uh, so what I'm going to do for you is um, post an assignment in, in Math Excel, but it's not going to be due. The, the, the due date I have on it right now is not the final due date. It's going to get pushed back. Uh, right now it's set up to be, I think, Monday, but, but I, will, I will definitely move that back.